There are clear steps that must be taken. The unconditional release of all political prisoners, an end to conflicts with minority groups, and a genuine dialogue between the government, the democratic opposition, and minority groups on a shared vision for the future. That is how a government in Burma will be able to respond to the needs of its people. That is the path that will bring Burma true security and prosperity. Those who rule Burma should know that they can regain their place in the world only when they regain the trust of their own people. In 1988, after decades of oppressive military rule, millions of people in Burma took to the streets to demand freedom and democracy. Two years later, the military held parliamentary elections, and the people of Burma voted overwhelmingly for Aung San Suu Kyi and her party, the National League for Democracy, which won 80% of the seats. But the military regime, which won only 2%, never recognized the results. Now, in 2010, the military regime, led by Tan Shui, will again hold elections. However, the recently announced electoral laws written by the military regime make a mockery of democracy and the popular will of the Burmese people, as they are designed exclusively to legitimize the military's grip on power. The edict issued by Burma's State Peace and Development Council guarantees a profoundly undemocratic election by a profoundly undemocratic regime. The election laws effectively bar Aung San Suu Kyi and the other 2,200 political prisoners from contesting in the election, as the laws state that individuals currently serving prison terms are ineligible to participate. That religious leaders and civil servants are also banned exposes this as an obvious attempt by the military to deny any candidate it feels threatened by. The election laws also stipulate that political parties must expel all imprisoned members within 60 days, as a failure to do so will result in the abolishment of the party. It's a show trial to try to keep her out of the way um, so that they can have their sham elections in, 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 in 2010. All parties must also pledge to honor the sham 2008 constitution, which lacks representation of ethnic minorities, any guarantee of basic rights and freedoms, and mainly serves to perpetuate permanent military occupation of Burma through complete control of the nation's affairs. Meanwhile, there is also mounting tension between the military and ethnic ceasefire groups over the regime's controversial demand for these ceasefire groups to agree to its border guard force plan to disarm and disband and join the Burmese army. Many ethnic ceasefire groups have refused to agree to join the regime's border guard force, setting no resolution to their demand for ethnic rights. The Burmese army continues to perpetrate human rights abuses against ethnic minorities, particularly civilians, deterring many ethnic armed groups from further cooperation. In addition, the military has cherry-picked all members of the election commission, of whom all have been banned from entering western countries. They are in charge of overseeing the political party activities and affairs, which leaves very little room to believe in the accountability, transparency, or integrity of the entire election process, as the military regime will be the one calling all the shots. Recently, the United Nations Special Rapporteur to Burma, Mr. Tomas Ojea Quintana, expressed his skepticism over the credibility of the 2010 election process, echoing the concerns of democracy activists and government officials around the world. He said, As 2010 is the year announced for holding national elections, freedom of opinion and expression, as well as assembly and association are more necessary than ever. The elections cannot be free and fair, transparent and inclusive, in accordance with international standards without those freedoms. At present, essential conditions allowing for the exercise of those rights do not exist in Burma. Now, Aung San Suu Kyi's political party, the National League for Democracy, has announced its decision to not re-register the party with the regime's election commission, citing the regime's unjust and undemocratic election laws. The party could not justify participating in an election that will not be free, fair, or inclusive, and have called on the international community to not recognize the election process in order to prevent the junta from gaining the legitimacy it seeks. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, stated in response to learning of the new election laws, the government must create conditions that give all stakeholders the opportunity to participate freely in elections. This includes the release of all political prisoners, including Da Aung San Suu Kyi, and respect for fundamental freedoms. Without the participation of Aung San Suu Kyi and all political prisoners, the elections would not be inclusive. 
These conditions do not yet exist, and before any credible political process can take place in Burma, the international community must insist that the military regime immediately and unconditionally release Aung San Suu Kyi and all political prisoners, initiate a genuine and time-bound dialogue with ethnic minorities and opposition groups, and amend the undemocratic provisions embedded in the Constitution. The international community must do more than simply say they are disappointed with the junta's election laws. It must strongly denounce the elections as undemocratic and refuse to recognize the results. Failure to do so at this crucial point in time will undermine the prospects for democracy, durable peace, and freedom in Burma for years to come. But I would like our people to be able to develop a vision together, to be free to develop a united vision of what we want our country to be. Visit our website at uscampaignforburma.org to learn how you can help today.